Hey, it's been a couple days since I got the Ableton Move, and I just wanted to share some first impressions uh, and a short list of tips and things I haven't heard other people talking about and a wish list of things for future firmware updates from Ableton. First impressions, I really like the Ableton Move. I'm not typically somebody who rushes out and buys the newest and shiniest thing. I'm more of a secondhand thrift store, Facebook marketplace type of gear accumulator, but the Ableton Move caught my attention right away for how it might replace certain items I have and consolidate them down into a smaller footprint. I've had Novation launch keys, the Novation circuit tracks, the Electron model samples, an Akai APC, Ableton Push 1, Teenage Engineering PO33, lots of other devices and controllers. The Ableton Move is built better than all of those and provides a lot of the same functionality and like I said, consolidates it into a much smaller footprint. So let's get into some of the things I found. One thing that bugs me is that tempo and metronome are separate hardware buttons in the shift step sequencer menu. To me, those two functions could have been combined in some way similar to how the arpeggiator is nested with the note repeat function. I know this is a little thing, but when you only have so many hardware buttons on a unit, uh, that can't be expanded with just firmware unless they were able to somehow cleverly repurpose that symbol to mean something else or if in the future they were going to give us some extra functionality that warranted them being two separate uh, hardware menus but i can't see what else they would really add to tempo or metronome speaking of those shift buttons i don't know if anyone else has noticed or mentioned it but it definitely seems like there are some other icons in the hardware that are not being utilized by this firmware uh, between the workflow settings and the tempo and the uh, arpeggiator or repeat and the double loop if you shine a light at a certain angle you can see that there's something in there this is very exciting i like the idea that the product team knew that they wanted to add some functionality in the future and they built it into the hardware ready to go i just really hope that they deliver on this we saw this same thing on the previous generation of the Novation launch key, where they added some cryptic symbols, and it was always up in the air what that was going to eventually be used for. Turns out, I don't think it was used for anything. Correct me if I'm wrong. Staying on the step sequencer buttons, I think it's a shame that in session mode, those buttons essentially lose all functionality. Uh, I think that could have been an excellent place to put some performance effects similar to like what you see in the OPZ, a stutter edit, a note repeat, a uh, bit reducer, an instant filter effect, anything for performance. At minimum, they could have set it up to launch scenes vertically. Um, when you go into control live mode and you're scrolling around in session view, you can select tracks by using the leftmost the leftmost step sequencer button that corresponds with a column of pads. Hope that makes sense. Uh, they could have done a similar thing where the leftmost step sequencer button launches everything in a scene on the move. I think the four sound engines in the move, the drum sampler, the sampler, drift, and wavetable, I think they're enough. But I think operator, an FM synth, would have gone a long way. In a device like this, that's set up primarily as a sort of preset with specific editable macros, FM synthesis makes a lot of sense. Uh, they have an excellent set of presets already in live. Porting that over, I wouldn't imagine, would present too much CPU cost or memory cost, but I don't know. All right, MIDI out is Great, I'm glad it exists, I'm glad it's there. There are a couple things I wish it could do. Right now you can't set the MIDI channel. It's always channel one. So whether or not you're sending track one, track two, track three, or track four, the MIDI channel is always channel one. So you can probably figure out based off of that last annoyance, my next annoyance is that you can only send MIDI out on one track at a time. So, you know, that limits this device as being a sort of brain for other hardware. And I get that's not really what it's supposed to be, but I don't see why that limitation is there necessarily. 
if the firmware was updated and you could set MIDI channels per track, I don't see why you wouldn't then be able to send multiple tracks out on MIDI. I wish there was a performance view for volume and panning. And what I mean by that is a view so that the four encoders on the left could be set up to correspond to volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four, and then the next four, pan one, pan two, pan three, pan four. In a performance scenario, those would be very handy. Having to jump in and out per track to set the volume and set the panning, it just takes some time and it's not quite as performative. The master effects are great. They sound really good and they help really glue a track together, but they really aren't performance effects and I'm not sure why. There's definitely an opportunity for them to function that way, uh, especially if you look at the channel EQ. The channel EQ is very helpful. Uh, it lets you quickly dial in the tone for a track, uh, but there's actually two encoders left empty at the end of the device. I don't see why Ableton didn't give us a filter there, uh, either a resonant high pass or low pass filter or a variable state filter. Just something to play with during a performance. I've heard it said elsewhere, and I just want to reiterate, I don't know why the 16 pads to the right of the device are empty by default. Um, I get that, you know, switching to 16 step pitch is sort of new for Ableton, and it's something you can toggle on and off, but I don't see why by default, there's no functionality from those 16 pads that would be an excellent opportunity for 16-step velocity. I'm hoping in the future we could see the ability to chain clips together. Um, I'm coming from a Novation circuit tracks, and that allowed you to select the beginning and end of a chain of clips. Uh, I think that would be excellent. Or alternatively, it'd be great if you could shift select one of those clips. And like you can in Ableton, you could set up follow actions uh, or launch conditions, something to just allow sequences to evolve a little bit more. Here's a little tip if you wanna edit a sequence of your drum sampler during a performance while playback is happening. To edit a step sequence, typically you have to select the pad and then you can go and add or remove from the step sequencer. Selecting the pad also plays the pad. If you're in the middle of a performance, that might not be what you want. So you can hold down shift and then select the pad. It won't play back. Then you'll be able to edit the sequence of that particular pad. Staying with the drum sampler, there's one thing that kind of bugs me. The fourth encoder from the left is called hold. It seems like that should be called end. Uh, there might be some reason in sampler lore that necessitates that being called hold. It seems to me that you could use the exact same user interface from the sample start on the second encoder, use that for the third encoder, call that one end, and then move attack over to the fourth encoder, followed by decay on the fifth encoder, and everything would make sense. Here's another tip. Always pay attention to the light status of the capture button. If it's lit up, that means something is in memory. I kept capturing clips that had extra material at the beginning because I would work out something, I'd, pr I'd practice it a few times, and then I would get it right and I would hit capture. And the whole thing was there. It also took me a while to figure out how to trim the beginning of a clip. This is something I haven't seen talked about very much out there. The loop length button, if you press that, you're actually able to see the beginning and end of your loop by looking at the flashing lights on the step sequencer buttons. You can select both the beginning and end, so you can trim either side of it to make a custom length. You can actually extend it that way also. The only problem is that it's not super exact. Say you did a pickup or it quantized it in kind of a weird way where it put the measure in the middle of where your beat was. It's a little bit hard to actually narrowly trim it to exactly fit what you were intending. The way to avoid this whole headache is to clear your capture before capturing. Uh, make sure you're ready, make sure it's cleared out. To do this, it's simple. You just hold shift and click capture. All right, this is the last thing. 
I really wish there was some chance built into the move. Uh, that could be, like I had mentioned before, with chaining together clips and randomly moving between them or selectively moving from one to the next based off of some percentage of chance or at the per step level setting chance or probability per step whether or not a note is going to sound whether or not a drum hit is going to play that could really allow this four channel performance groove box to grow into something much more interesting that's it that's all i gotta say after the first couple of days so far i really like it this device already is living right on my desk it's integrating seamlessly into a workflow that i already have in ableton live and i am really looking forward to doing more with it if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave those below thanks for watching <laughs>